everyone. So good to be back in Uptown Kids with you again this week. I really hope you've had a good week. This is our third week now of our series, Custom Creations. I hope you are regularly looking in the mirror and saying, I'm amazing, because you are. God made you and he thinks that you are wonderful. Point to someone and say, you're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> and again, you're amazing. <laughs> In fact, it's what our memory verse for this series says. Let's say it. I'll read it first and then you read it with me. Okay, here we go. How you made me is amazing and wonderful. I praise you for that. What you have done is wonderful. I know that very well. Let's read it together, shall we? How you made me is amazing and wonderful. I praise you for that. What you have done is wonderful. I know that very well. Brilliant. Remember, that verse comes from a book in the Bible called Psalms, right in the middle of the Bible and it's chapter 139, verse 14. Not only are we amazing and wonderful, but we're unique. There's no one else like us in the world. We're all individual. And remember, individuality is discovering who you're meant to be so that you can make a difference to the world. Here at Uptown Kids, we want to help you discover who you're meant to be and help you to become more like God, more like Jesus in the way you act and speak and behave. We're all different, but we can all use our gifts and skills and abilities to make a difference. Our new song today reminds us that God made us as individuals so that we can make a difference, make a difference in the world. He has a plan for each of us and he doesn't make mistakes. So as we sing, let's celebrate that God made you and he made me on purpose. Let's sing it out.
that is such a great song. Well done. Sit yourselves down for our story if you haven't done already. Today we're going to hear about Lydia. We read about her in the New Testament part of the Bible in a book called Acts. Now Lydia made purple cloth and at that time that was rare and so it was expensive. She lived in a place where people were they were encouraged to believe in false gods. And she began to wonder, wonder about the God that the Jewish people believed in. She'd never heard of Jesus. But that was all about to change when she met a man called Paul. And Paul told her all about Jesus. So let's watch the so-and-so show and hear more of Lydia's story. Greetings and salutations, our friends. Ooh, fancy. Always. Uh -huh. I am Brandon. And I'm John. And welcome to the So-and-So Show. And what a show we have today. Am I right, Brandon? That's right. The beauty is, we don't even know what the show will be today. That's right, because whether you're at home or at church or on the International Space Station, wherever you may be watching our show today, you are going to choose what happens on today's show. You get to create your own So-and-So Show. Okay, here's how it's gonna work. We're gonna do the show like normal, but whenever John and I have a choice to make, you're gonna make the choice for us. All you have to do is cheer for the choice you want, wherever you are in the world, and we'll go with whoever cheers the loudest. You got it? Got it. I was talking to them. I got it. Okay, uh, so let's start. Um, John, how is your day going? Oh, uh, so good, so good. My Aunt Suzette came for a visit this weekend and she always brings me Candy. Oh, that is good. Yeah. I want some candy. Do you have any left over? I don't know. Let me see. Ugh. Yeah, just a little. Whoa! We'll never be able to eat all that. Uh, you may be right. Hmm. Hey, you know what? I've always wanted to make a portrait of my face out of candy. Huh? Oh, no, no, let's make something that people will actually want to look at. Yeah. Uh, right. Like the Eiffel Tower. Oh, there it is, your first choice. What should we do? Should we make the Eiffel Tower out of candy? Or a portrait of my face. Start cheering now. Yeah. Turn up the uh, audience microphone. I want John! Oh! Okay, it sounds like you all want us to make a portrait of John's face out of candy. It's your choice. So let's get to work. Come on! And voila! That is unique. It's a treasure to keep forever. Yeah. Mmm. 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 Gluey. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's perfect right there. Oh, look at that. The eyes follow me wherever I go. Oh, boy. It's time for someone who knows. Oh, oh okay. You get to decide who our guest is going to be. I think it should be the founder of the candy factory, sweets to the max. A man who's never given in an interview or even been seen in public, Mr. Billy Bonka. And I think our guest should be my cousin Howard. He's a dentist. Really? What? Good dental hygiene is very important. Tooth decay is a huge problem. Just let them vote. All right, what's it gonna be? Whimsical candy connoisseur Billy Bonka or Howard the Dentist. Start cheering now. Billy Bonka! Candy! 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 My mom's a dentist. The people have spoken. Please welcome someone who knows. <laughs> Come on in, welcome, oh, welcome. Oh, here. Ooh, so let me get that. Awesome, awesome. 
Tell us who you are and what you know. Well, I'm Billy Bonka and I own the largest candy factory in the world. It's amazing. I think so. <laughs> so uh, what do you love about candy? No, oh, what's not to love? The sugary sweetness, the chocolatey chocolateness, the creamy caramel deliciousness. Yes! I love it all, yes. But what I love most about candy yeah? is the profit margins. The Profit margins? Yes! Let me just show you this candy bar. Yum! <laughs> graph. It's a bar graph for candy. As you can see, <clears throat> the actual cost of a chocolate bar is 11 cents, but we sell it for $2.50. And then with quality market research and kids focus groups, we are able to determine the right color packaging that will lead to the highest profit margins. Do you know what the key to any successful candy company is? Uh, delicious candies? No. Variety? No. Strategic shelf space and positioning. The most profitable candies are the ones at the approximate eye level of an average sized child. Children want what they see. It's really that simple. Huh. Uh, I think we're out of time. Uh, are you sure? I have this uh, delicious chocolate pie. Pie? Chart. It's a pie chart. For chocolate. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show today. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. Uh, pie chart. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. Yes. For chocolate. So your cousin's a dentist. Too late. Okay. It's Bible story time with Kellen. How's it going, gentlemen? Well, what do you got for us today? Well, our story today is about a woman named Lydia. And to help me tell it, here... Oh, you get to choose how we tell the Bible story today. Okay, I shot a film version of the story. Or I can read it. Start cheering now. Lydia! 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 Oh, that was a close one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think you chose John! What? Take it away, my friend. Oh, roll it! Let us go down to the river and see if we can find a place of prayer. Paul, over there. I'm Lydia. Let me tell you the message of Jesus. this to be true. I want me and my entire household to be baptized. Do you consider me to be a believer in the Lord? If you do, will you all come to stay at my house? Yes. That was it? Well, there's not a lot about Lydia in the Bible. John's right. We actually don't know much more than what we just saw. But it was important enough that Luke, the author of Acts, thought he should write it down. And while we don't know a lot about Lydia, there are some really cool things we can guess based off what we know from history. Oh yeah? Like what? Well, we know she sold purple cloth, and this region was known for its purple cloth, it was considered a luxury item. So there's a good chance that Lydia had a thriving business with lots of wealthy customers. Cool, so she was probably really good at her job. What else? Lydia was the first person we know of that became a Jesus follower in Philippi, the very first. And later on, when God miraculously broke Paul and Silas out of prison, do you know where they went? 
Where? Lydia's house, where all the other Jesus followers with Paul were staying. Lydia had used her skill as a business person, her talent as a craftsperson, and the money she made to provide housing for Paul and all the other believers while they were in town. And she most likely became an important leader of the church in Philippi. She was willing to use her gifts to serve God by helping others. This could be a much longer movie. <laughs> Definitely. I think one of the reasons Luke wanted to include this story was to show that God can use our gifts, no matter who you are or where you are. Every person has something they're good at that can be used to help others. Thanks. That's great, Kellen. Thanks so much. Yeah. You're welcome so much. I'll see you guys next time. Later. See ya. Bye. That was really great. Oh, yeah. I, I love that there's so much more to people than what we just see on the surface. I mean, it was just three verses in the Bible about Lydia, but here we are talking about her nearly 2,000 years later. Yeah. I think it's a good reminder that everyone has something to give. Everyone has something they're good at. Yeah, they do. Absolutely. Reveal the question. What are you good at? Maybe you're really good at a sport. Or understanding math. Or maybe, oh, you're really good at making people that feel left out feel welcome. Everyone has something they're good at. And what's cool is that you get to choose how to use the gift God gave you. Oh, which brings us to your final choice of the show. Okay, what should we do for the credits? I say, we eat my self-portrait. Mmm. <laughs> and I say, we bring on my cousin Howard, the dentist. Start cheering now. I can't tell who won. Let's do both. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time on the So and So Show. Yeah, bye. It's tooth time. Yeah. You get a toothbrush. You get a toothbrush. You get a toothbrush. You get another toothbrush. Yeah. Floss time. One for you. One for you. Because I got some tongue scrubbers. Oh, no, no, Scrub no, no, your no. tongue. There's top pocket floss right here. Oh. You got top pocket floss. That gets all of the little gremlins out. Tongue brush, tongue scrubber. Yeah. I gave myself a cut. <laughs> I ran out. That's so cool. I love that reminder about Lydia and how she used her individuality to make a difference. She used what she was good at to help others. She had a special talent and a successful business making and selling purple cloth. But she didn't just use the money that she made for herself. When she became a Jesus follower, she showed it by inviting Paul and his friends to stay at her house. And then she continued to use her gifts to help other people in the church. You know, we can all do that. We're all good at something. In fact, we're all probably good at lots and lots of different things. The thing we want you to understand today in Uptown Kids is how we can use what we are good at, the gifts that we have, to really help others. Use your gifts to help others. Let's pray and ask God to help us with that. Shut your eyes if you want to. Thank you for the wonderful and amazing way you have made us, God. We are all amazing and wonderful and unique and individual with all of the things that we're good at, all of our gifts. Please would you help us to use our gifts just like Lydia to help others, just like you did, Jesus. We want to be more like you and show people what God is like because of the way we behave. Please help us. Amen. I'm loving our custom creation series and the reminder today that we are all good at things and we can all choose to use those things to help others. Let's do that. I'll see you next week.